Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel. This is Teacher Josie that will give you an idea about ecosystem life energy. The video focuses on achieving this learning competency. Differentiate basic features and importance of photosynthesis and respiration. In this video, you will learn that all organisms need the energy to sustain life. You will focus on how the organisms obtain energy from the food and how they produce energy. Here are some key questions for you to ponder after finishing this video. Why are plants called great food providers? What are the parts of the plants involved in photosynthesis? What are the major stages in photosynthesis? Let's recall your understanding of the concepts of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Identify the word based on the given description. The total chemical processes taking place within the living system. What do you think is the answer? The answer is metabolism. The green coloring matter of plants. That is chlorophyll. Let us first familiarize the different abbreviation that we are going to encounter in this topic. NADP, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. NAD means nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. ATP means adenosine triphosphate. BGAL, phosphoglyceraldehyde. FAD, flavin adenine dinucleotide. ADP means adenosine diphosphate. The main producers like plants, algae, certain proteins, and some prokaryotes capture light energy from the sun for their needs and to provide energy for almost all life forms. These producers are considered as self-feeders or autotrophs because they produce their own food and sustain themselves without consuming other organisms in order to survive. If we look at the hierarchy of food chain, we can see that plants are in the bottom parts, which are considered as primary source of food for all consumers like animals, including humans. If plants manufacture energy for animals to use, they should have a way to recharge their nutrients. What is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is the process by which plants use light energy from the sun and carbon dioxide to produce glucose, the sugar molecules and oxygen that they use for growth and nourishment. Primarily, photosynthesis takes place in the leaves, which are the main organs for photosynthesis. The typical parts of the leaves include the upper and lower epidermis, palisade mesophyll, mesophyll spongy layer, vascular bundles, and stomata. The upper epidermis, the outermost layer, which secretes a waxy substance called cuticle. This cuticle helps retain water inside the leaf cells. At the lower epidermis, you will see some openings. Each opening is called stoma or stomata. This is where carbon dioxide enters, oxygen passes out. Around the stoma is a pair of bean-shaped cells called guard cells. The guard cell is an epidermal cell with chloroplast that regulates the opening and closing of the stoma. Between the upper and lower epidermis, you can see layers of cells. This is called mesophyll layer, which is composed of palisade, cells that are arranged like columns and spongy cells which are loosely arranged cells. These cells have organelles known as chloroplasts that contains green pigments which trap energy from the sun. The chloroplast is enclosed by a double membrane namely an outer membrane and an inner membrane. 
Between these membranes is a space called stroma, which is the liquid part of the chloroplast. Embedded in the stroma is a complex network of stacked sacs. Each stack is called a granule or grana. Each of those flattened sacs is called this thylakoids that contains green-colored pigments called chlorophylls that absorb light. The equation used to explain photosynthesis is as follows. Carbon dioxide and water with sunlight produces glucose and oxygen. Photosynthesis involves many steps but it can be divided into two stages. One, the light-dependent reaction, and the second is Calvin cycle. The light-dependent reaction stage occurs in the thylakoid membrane and requires a continuous supply of light. During this reaction, light energy is absorbed by the chlorophyll and converted into chemical energy. In order to plants to grow, they need carbon dioxide, water, and energy. The chemical process by which plants use these resources to manufacture glucose is called photosynthesis. Plants appear green because they reflect yellow and green wavelengths of light. Red and blue wavelengths of light are absorbed by these pigments and provide the energy that is used for photosynthesis. The chemical reactions of photosynthesis occur within plant cells known as chloroplasts. The light-dependent reaction occur in the thylakoid where conversion of light energy to chemical energy is initiated. The reactions that synthesize glucose, the Calvin cycle, occur in stroma. The light-dependent reaction stage occurs in the thylakoid membrane and requires a continuous supply of light. The chlorophyll is composed of two units of light-absorbing molecule, namely the photosystem 2 or PS2 and photosystem 1, PS1. The light-dependent reaction begins when PS2 receives light energy. The light energy is transferred to chlorophyll reaction center, causing electrons in the reaction center to become energized. The energized electrons escape PS2 and move to an electron acceptor molecule, located in the electron transport chain. To replace the lost electrons in PS2, water is split, releasing oxygen two hydrogen ions, and two electrons. The excited electrons continue to move from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 through the electron transport chain. A protein in the electron transport chain pumps hydrogen ions from the stroma into the thylakoid space. As electrons move between those photosystems, they lose energy. Photosystem 1 absorb light and re-energize the electron. The chemical called NADP accepts the electron and hydrogen and becomes NADPH, which is high energy molecule. As the hydrogen ions continue to build up inside the thylakoid, ATP synthase allows the hydrogen ions to travel from the thylakoid to the stroma by diffusion and captures the energy of their movement by spinning and stores that energy in ATP. An enzyme found in the thylakoid membrane uses energy of electrons from both PS2 and PS1 to create more ATP and to stop the production of NADPH. It is important to maintain the right proportion of NADPH and ATP which will be used in the next phase of photosynthesis. In short, chlorophyll in photosystem 2 absorbs light and energizes an electron. 
a carrier molecule transports the electron out and down the electron transport chain. A water molecule is split, releasing a new electron into the system and oxygen into the atmosphere. The chlorophyll in photosystem 1 absorbs light, energizing an electron. A carrier removes the electron and the electron from PS2 replaces it. The electron is accepted by NADP at the end of the transport chain. The gradient pushes ions through ATP synthase, driving ATP synthesis, NADPH and ATP go into the Calvin cycle. The second stage of photosynthesis is the light-independent reaction or Calvin cycle which occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. This series of complex reactions can be divided into three phases, carbon fixation, carbon dioxide reduction, and regeneration of RUVP. The ATP and NADPH formed during the light-dependent reactions are used in the stroma to fuel the Calvin cycle reactions. The Calvin cycle consists of a series of reactions that reduce carbon dioxide to produce the carbohydrate glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The cycle consists of three steps, the first of which is carbon fixation. In this step, carbon dioxide is attached to ribulose 1,5-biphosphate resulting in a 6-carbon molecule that splits into two 3-carbon molecules. The second step is a sequence of reactions using electrons from NADPH and some of the ATP to reduce carbon dioxide. In the final step, ribulose 1,5-biphosphate is regenerated. For every three turns of the cycle, five molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate are used to reform three molecules of ribulose 1,5-biphosphate. The remaining glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is then used to make glucose, fatty acids, or glycerol. It takes two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to make one molecule of glucose phosphate. Thus, the Calvin cycle has to run six times to produce one molecule of glucose. These molecules can remove their phosphate and add fructose to form sucrose. The molecule plants used to transport carbohydrates throughout their system. Glucose phosphate is also the starting molecule for the synthesis of starch and cellulose. To sum the process and the products of Calvin cycle, the overall chemical equation of the phase is the following. 3 carbon dioxide plus 6 NADPH plus 5 water plus 9 ATP. The product is G3P plus 2 hydrogen ions plus 6 NADP plus 9 ADP plus 8 pi. Pi stands for inorganic phosphate. Six runs of the cycle are needed in order to come up with one glucose molecule. As mentioned earlier, the surplus G3P, which is produced by the reactions, could be used to form other carbohydrates depending on the necessities of the plants. Did you understand? Let's have an activity. Lights off, lights on. Write on if the process pertains to light-dependent reaction and write off if the process pertains to light and dependent reaction. Number one. It is also known as the dark reaction of photosynthesis. The answer is off. 2. Primary acceptor of carbon is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. The answer is on. Sites of the process is in the stroma. 
The answer is O. Number 4. Photolysis of water does not occur. The answer is O. Number 5. Process type is both cyclic and non-cyclic process. Answer is on. Number 6. It is a release of oxygen that gives off aldehydes and hydrogen upon dehydrogenation. The answer is on. Number 7. It is a process that converts solar energy into chemical energy. The answer is on. Number 8. It is a light-dependent process. The answer is on. 9. Process type is cyclic only. The answer is off. Number 10. Primary acceptor of carbon is rubisco phosphate. The answer is off. Do you have the same answer? Good job! Let's check your understanding. Which best describes light-independent reactions? A. They create energy-rich ATP and NADPH. B. They are the first phase of photosynthesis. C. They use carbon dioxide to make proteins. D. They utilize the energy stored in ATP and NADPH. Comment below if you know the answer. That's all for today. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye!